Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle. Welcome to my channel. I've just become a level 37 human and I've been thinking what should I do to acknowledge this or like mark the event on my channel and then I remembered that last year another YouTuber, who was it, um, Ariel, is it? Okay, I can't remember her last name, here it is. Um, she made a video, it was like 25 things she had learned in 25 years. And when I saw that, I remember thinking, I can't even think of 25 things I've learned and I've been around for longer than that, oh crap. So I kind of eventually ended up sitting down and setting myself the challenge to think of 37 things I had learned in my 37 years. And eventually I actually got there and I was like, hmm, well, video it is. Mine are not as, um, pretty as hers were. She had lovely ones, I will leave a link. Um, mine are more kind of like rules for successful adulting, which I think makes sense because at this point I've been an adult for longer than I was ever a child. Or maybe it just reflects that I'm like a grumpy and more serious person than she is. <laughs> but nonetheless, here is my list. Oh, Got to mention, I've grouped these into general categories. I will put the timestamps below. So if there's a topic that you just don't care about, you can skip. And just fair warning to begin with that the health and safety section deals with some kind of intense topics, even though I'm not going into any kind of particular details. So if you can't handle intensities like you know, general references to assault, mental health, that kind of thing. Maybe just skip that section. Okay, without further ado, my 37 things that I have learned in my 37 years. Number one, it's nice to enjoy your job, but your job does not have to be your passion. It can just be a job, a thing that you do to pay the bills. Number two, Never stop learning, but when it comes to a university education, only get one if you need it to pursue the career that you're interested in. Otherwise, the amount of years and thousands of dollars of debt that are required to get that education aren't going to pay off. Also, if you don't know what to study, don't study. Go and do something else with your life and maybe come back to study later. I mean, I was 25 when I started my bachelor's degree. That was a great decision. If I had gone to university at 18, there's no way I would have chosen sciences. Similarly, while you're trying to make a decision to go or what to study if you are going to go to university, don't make that decision based on what your friends are doing because you want to have friends at university. You'll make friends when you get there. Don't just go with the flow of what your friends or what your mum says you should do. Number three, socialise with your co-workers. Chit chat with them in the staff room. Make the effort to go to after work drinks. You don't have to be there for the entire thing. Like if your co-workers are like massive drinkers and you aren't really, you can totally go like have a coke and then leave. But you've shown up, you've socialised, it'll pay off in the long run. Number four, it is better to ask many questions than to make many mistakes. Number five, if you find yourself unemployed for a good stretch of time, do something constructive with that time. Obviously what you can do is going to be limited by what your resources are. But the reality is that you can't search for work actively 24-7. You're going to have other bits of time. Use these to upskill if you can. That might just be doing like an online course, but it means that when you get to a job interview and they're like, what have you been doing with all these months? You can be like, oh, well, I've, you know, been watching free videos on this, you know, via this university. A lot of universities put their lectures online. You don't get, you know, a piece of paper out of it, but you can at least talk about you know, watching those videos and having learned something from them. It makes you look like a more productive, more proactive person. Number six, this one is stupid, but it's true. Learn to drink white wine. 
If you are in a field where there are quite often work function functions, in my experience they quite often will serve a very limited range of beverages, quite often white wine or orange juice and water if you ask nicely. And if you are in a field where you are at the younger end of the employment spectrum and there are young interns, if you can have a glass of wine in your hand instead of a glass of orange juice, even though it's stupid and drinking doesn't make you an adult, the older people that you work with perceive you as more of an adult than the interns who are drinking orange juice and you'll get just that little kind of pinch more respect because you're a grown-up drinking alcohol. Stupid, unfair, true. Number seven, keep one nice outfit at all times for unexpected funerals and job interviews. Quite often, as I said, funerals are unexpected. You may not have time to go shopping and if you are unemployed for a while, you might not have the money to go and buy work clothes. Have one nice outfit in your closet that you don't wear in general so you can just pull it out when those times come. Number eight, don't work more hours than you are paid to. I realize in some industries this is going to be particularly difficult and in some very toxic work environments may be directly detrimental, but within reason and wherever possible, don't do it. Number nine, save every month. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can just be like literally a pittance, just a few dollars, but save the same amount of money or more every single month into the same account and never touch it. This isn't like your emergency account if you lose a job. This isn't where you save up to buy a new car. This is the I literally never touch it account. The reason you want to do this is because in say 10 or 15 years you might want to get a loan to buy a house and it shows your bank that you can be trusted with money like you put money aside regularly. Even if you say inherit enough money to put a deposit on a house and it's a big deposit and you only need a little loan, if you don't have a history of saving and being responsible with money, you may not get that loan. So open an account, put a pittant, pittance into it every week, every fortnight, every month, however often you get paid, but do it religiously and never touch it. The account doesn't have to be like generous when you go for that loan, you just need that history of saving. Number 10. If you can't afford at least third party car insurance, you can't afford a car. If you can't afford travel insurance, you can't afford to travel. Number 11. This one's kind of an obvious one, but it's always worth saying. Pay your bills first. And pay the important ones first. It's more important to pay your rent every single time, on time, than paying, you know, for a round of drinks or buying a stereo. Cover the essential bills before you pay for anything else. Number 12. Find your sport. It's easier to engage in a physical activity that you find entertaining, like a dance class or a hiking trip or going for a bike ride, than it is to just put the equivalent amount of time into lifting weights or running on the treadmill. If you really hate exercising, find a sport or physical activity that you kind of enjoy and can get into the habit of doing regularly. Number 13. If you experience a mental illness, it's really lovely if the people around you can be supportive, but you still need to take some responsibility for managing your situation. That might be taking medication, talking to a professional, asking for help, or not taking on additional responsibilities that might add to your stress levels and make it harder for you to function day to day. Number 14. If you feel that your doctor is not listening to you, get a second opinion. Doctors are not infallible and they are just as prone to prejudice and 
stuff as any other person. And if you are plus size, a woman or a person of colour, there is very high chance that your feeling that they're not listening to you is completely accurate. It's probably not in your head. So get a second opinion. Number 15. This one's a serious one. If you don't want to hear seriously stuff, skip ahead a minute. <clears throat> Make sure you know how to get home. If you are a young person and you've just moved to a new town and you've got new friends and you're going out to new places, make sure you know how to get home. Getting a ride home with your friend isn't enough. That friend who's brand new, you don't know if they're actually quite prone to drinking too much and not being able to give you a ride after all. That friend might wander off with some guy, you might get lost. So make sure that you have a fully charged phone and enough money for an Uber. Make sure that you know the path that Uber should take. So if it doesn't go in the right direction, you know straight away. If you're going to walk home, make sure you know how to get there. And if someone in your life has ever said to you, no matter what time it is or where you are, call me and I will come, call them. It is not a burden. They knew what they were offering when they said it, so call them. I have driven across the city in the middle of the night in my pyjamas to pick a younger friend up from a party. And I've driven across town in the middle of the day to drop a younger friend off at the police station to report what happened to her when she was walking home from a party. In neither case was my friend a burden. I wasn't mad, I didn't feel like it was a waste of my time or my energy. But one of those things was a much nicer experience. One of those things turned into a midnight visit to McDonald's for ice cream. And the other one turned into months of very bad days. And I would much rather have been called out to come get her again than to have what happened happen. If someone has said to you, if you ever need a ride, call me. Call them. Okay. The serious one is gone now. <laughs> For now, there might be another serious one, actually. Yes, there is. Number 16. Sunscreen. If you think you do not burn, sunscreen. If you think chemicals are bad, sunscreen. Particularly if you're from the Northern Hemisphere and you come to New Zealand or Australia for a holiday and a local says to you, uh, our sun's really strong, wear sunscreen? Sunscreen. No saying, oh, I tan. No, no, no. Sunscreen. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> Number 17. Take care of your feet. Wear supportive shoes. If you need to, go to a podiatrist, take care of your feet. They're the foundations of every step you take, every day. And having sore feet ruins everything. Number 18. Take a first aid course and keep that certificate up to date. This also helps under the employment category, but also means that you know what to do in an emergency situation. That situation might not happen for another 10 years, but at least you will be ready when it does. Number 19. Wear shoes when you're driving. I realise that in some countries shoe wearing is like a constant thing, but in New Zealand at least, shoes are very, very optional under pretty much all circumstances. But always wear shoes when you're driving. In case there's an accident, you need to be able to get out of your car and move around without worrying about standing on broken glass. So, shoes when driving, very important, even if you never wear shoes under any other circumstance. I just said never. That ruined the dramatics. Anyway, moving on, because I can't be bothered refilming. Number 20. If you have breasts, invest in good quality bras and get them properly fitted. It makes such a big difference. Number 21. It is not normal to be thinking about ending your life. 
get help and get it now. 22. Pelvic floor exercises matter. When I was young, I would see ads saying, you know, one in however many women over 30 experience light bladder leakage. And I always thought, oh well, those are just the ones who have had children. As long as they don't breed, it's fine. No, it isn't. It isn't. All uterus owners need to be doing pelvic floor exercises. Do them every day. Do them now. Do them while you're having sex. Do them while you're doing yoga. Do them every day. Or when you're my age, you'll piss yourself. Hooray! Number 23. When you go out drinking, one alcohol, one water or other non-alcoholic beverage, repeat. This way you can drink all night with spending considerably less money, getting considerably less drunk and not being as hungover the next day. Number 24, don't delay things which will bring you joy. My best example of this is that when I was really young, I wanted a dog so badly and I kept not getting a dog because it wasn't the right time and I might go overseas. I had no concrete plans to go overseas and that's where the mistake was. If I actually was you know, intending to go overseas next year and I was starting to line up jobs or anything like that, then that would have been a reasonable reason not to get the dog. But I only had a vague idea that I would like to go overseas at some point. And if I had bought the dog when I first wanted it, it actually would have died of old age before I ever actually got out of the country. And even then, I wasn't gone long enough for it to have been a big issue. I probably could have just got my mum to look after it for a while and then I would have been back. I could have had a dog. And I didn't. And there was all this joy that I completely missed out on in my life because I was just putting it off for a, a time that would be more sensible because I might to go overseas. Total mistake. Number 25. When you go clothes or shoes shopping, if there's an item that you keep looking at but doesn't quite seem like your usual style, maybe the colour's a bit weird, maybe it's leopard print, and you just think, nah, but you keep looking at it, try it on anyway. You might find that actually it looks awesome on, you may find your next favourite outfit. Number 26. Don't compare yourself to others. There are always going to be people who are greater and lesser than yourself. If you compare yourself to the people who are greater than you, you're going to become bitter. And if you're constantly comparing yourself to the people who are lesser, then you're going to become arrogant. And then if it turns out one of the people that you've decided is lesser than you has a giant leap forward and becomes better than you, then oh my god, the bitter. So generally to be avoided, compare yourself to no one except the person you were yesterday. And even then, do so in a way that is like kind. Number 27. If they are prepared to cheat on their current partner to be with you, they are also prepared to cheat on you to be with somebody else. And you deserve better than that. And maybe you don't believe me when I say that you deserve better than to just be someone's bit on the side. You do, but if that's how you feel, if you think you don't deserve anything better than that, if you don't respect yourself enough to demand more than that, then maybe think of the person that they're with. This is again very hard to say in a completely non-heteronormative manner. So if your person is with somebody else, maybe have respect for that somebody else who deserves not to have their partner be cheating on them with you. And just break it off. Did I achieve that in an appropriate manner? I don't know. I'm moving on. It was hard. Too many days. Number 28. You are in charge of your own body, even in a relationship. Even when it comes to body hair. Your partner does not 
have the right to tell you to shave anything. Now this is a two-way street. I see a lot of women hear this and they're like, yeah, he doesn't have a right to tell me to shave my whatever. But she will then turn around and tell her husband to shave off his beard. Or like force him down to pluck his monobrow out. That is not okay. He can't tell her to shave anything. She can't tell him to shave anything. No, no, no. Your hair is your own. Let it grow if you wish. Rip it out if you wish. The point is, if you wish. Number 29. If you are not mature enough to be completely chill about another person experiencing their period, then you are not mature enough to touch a vagina. Number 30. Learn to swim. This may be useful for work in some industries. It may help you enjoy a wider range of recreational activities. It may help you save a life. It is a useful thing to know how to do. Number 31. Question your beliefs, particularly those that were taught to you as a child and even more so where those beliefs dictate who is or is not a good person. I'm not suggesting abandon your faith. I'm not screaming like, yay, atheism. I'm just saying question your beliefs. Make sure that you actually agree with the things that you believe and that they make sense to you. Number 32, get a full driver's license. Even if you don't intend to drive, you don't have a car, you have no intention of getting a car, get the license. It may turn out to be useful for work and it's very useful in the case of an emergency situation. It's a handy thing just to know that if you need to drive, you can. Number 33, learn to stand up for yourself by standing up for others. Number 34, this one's a little bit odd, but bear with me. If there's a group of people, say at school or at work, wherever, group of people, and they seem really similar to each other, friendly, nice, but they don't like invite you to join them. They may be a little bit insular and clicky. There's a good chance that they're like that because they're actually super introverted or just generally socially incompetent. If you just force your way in, just walk up to them and be like, hey, how's it going? And sit down. They're going to be nice to you and possibly actually really grateful that you've inserted yourself into their group because they were actually too awkward to invite you over to begin with. Number 35. You do not need to fully understand every single little aspect and detail of another person's lived experience in order to respect that that's their lived experience and to respect any boundaries that they put in place because of it. Number 36. Cut off poisonous people like you would a gangrenous limb. My hands are out of shot, but I'm gesturing. How awkward. And finally, number 37. A sage piece of wisdom that has been passed down to me and which I am passing on to others, even though I personally have never needed it, but is clearly a piece of great wisdom that should be shared. <clears throat> if you ever allow another person to meticulously clean your genitalia with toothbrush and toothpaste, in short, as a gentle toothpaste, nothing of the extra strong whitening or fresh breathing variety. <laughs> Those are my 37 things that I've learned in my 37 years. Do let me know in the comments below what you thought of my list or if you think there's anything that I missed. What's the most interesting or useful piece of advice that you've picked up in your years? If you liked this video, give it a like. It helps people find my videos. If you're new here, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified for my next video, which will be on something completely different. 
and I'll see you next time. Bye.